it's a lot more pleasant here than it is out on the channel and I hope the audio is going to come over. I know it's still a little breezy over here, but we'll get right into the report. And let's start with Clear Lake. Uh, Clear Lake Bait and Tackle is reporting about the same fishing as it was last week. Guys are picking up fish on uh, A rigs and they also started picking some fish up on LB 500s. Uh, Clear Lake Bait and Tackle suggested that most of the fish are deep. They're not on a summertime bite, it's wintertime conditions, but if you know what you're doing up there, you can probably go up and, and catch a few fish. If you are a weekend angler that wants to go up and really experience how good uh, uh, Clear Lake can be, now is it's just not yet the time to go up there. So hold back on Clear Lake right now for the inexperienced anglers. If you know the lake, you can go up there and catch some fish. That's Clear Lake. Uh, talk to John Leasty. He's been fishing and that's experienced guide service up at uh, Maloney's and John has been really concentrating on Maloney's this week and he's doing you know well for winter time. It's winter time conditions and, and the fishing has been good uh, throughout the winter. It generally is at Maloney's and John's been catching fish. He's still vertically fishing um, in about 40 to 60 feet of water. It's video game fishing. Uh, take your choice of what you're using, whether it's you know shaky heads or, or drop shots or whatever. You're going to catch fish uh, by moving around and finding the fish and then just getting on top of them and vertically fishing. John also reported that there are more largemouth bass coming into the mix, so he's getting a bag of spots and largemouth. And he's also doing well or started catching fish on uh, some underspin. So he suggested if you go up there, you might want to throw on a half, in, a half ounce underspin with a Kitek and fish that in about 20 to 40 feet of water and you'll start picking up some, some fish doing that technique. Uh, especially nice if you want to get away from the, the vertical fishing and try something a little different during the course of the day. So I'll keep reporting uh, very quickly on um, Maloney's and, and Clear Lake just to give you guys an idea of what's going on so if you want to get uh, get away from the Delta and go up there and, and obviously if something really starts popping up there it'd be good to know because I, I think everybody that fishes the Delta also fishes Maloney's and, um, and Clear Lake. So real quick reports on those lakes. We're going to get into the Delta now and the Delta report has been good. We talked about last week that the tides, everything kind of coming together, tidal coefficients, um, water temperature rising, moon phases and Everything that Mother Nature gave us really panned out. Literally, uh, as I put that report out on Tuesday, I started getting reports on Wednesday and Thursday that there was an increase in the fishing. And that increase has started about last Wednesday or Thursday. It went through the weekend. Uh, it was good Monday and Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. We've got a big storm. Well, not a big storm. We got a uh, a front that's moved in and it really dropped the temperature. The wind was blowing out here about 30 miles an hour today and um, my morning fishing was just a dud. I couldn't get bit, but let's forget about that and talk about the great fishing that, that we've had in the past week. Water conditions right now are perfect. I have seen about five foot visibility wherever I go. Give a foot, take a foot, but just perfect uh, visibility in the Delta. Water temperatures that were hovering around 48, 49 a couple weeks ago, they've bumped up to about a, a 52, and that's in the morning. In the afternoons, water temperatures have been getting up to 54, 55 degrees. So everything is still looking really good. We're going to um, continue to see the fishing improve. But I wanted to talk about the, the tidal coefficients. Last week when we had the really good fish, fishing, all of the tidal coefficients, all of the tidal coefficients were in the 90s. Starting the 19th uh, through the 23rd, our tidal coefficients are going from the 90s down into the 30s and 40s and up to the 50s. Those are just lousy, lousy tides. So, if you have a choice of being out here, I would stay off the water between the 19th and the 23rd. But starting the 26th, our tidal uh, efficiencies are going to go back up into the 90s and even over a hundred so next week may be tough but uh, it's coming the better fishing is coming and I think as we get farther into the season you know it's always a roller coaster out here but for the last two or three weeks the roller coaster has been on a downward trend 
now we're heading up and hopefully that trend is going to continue but it will be a roller coaster going up so we may have one week of really good fishing and a week of so-so fishing or very tough fishing but let's get into what happened last week <clears throat> everybody I talked to seemed to be catching fish I saw more smiles at the dock in about a three or four day period last week than I've seen in the last three weeks so everyone was catching fish and there were some huge fish coming in uh, some six and eight pound fish uh, uh, I was getting reports on also have the report from hook line and sinker they had their 50 boat tournament on Sunday it took 28 pounds to win that tournament 28 something you would expect uh, with a guy 28 pounds of fish would have a big kicker maybe a 10 or 12 that wasn't the case a couple sevens a couple fives and then another quality four pound whatever it was fish to turn out his bag so really great bag and I think there were several other 20 pound bags uh, there were also a few guys that got blank so it ran the gamut of depending on who you are out here of, of what they did in that, in that tournament but as you can see a 28 pound bag for wintertime fishery that that is an outstanding bag and, and whoever it was that had that bag he did a really good job and, and need to be congratulated but saw that fish uh, fishing on an up uh, upswing all week I think Sunday may have been that the top of the heap on that I was doing well throughout the week and oh let me get back to uh, the guy that won that tournament uh, his uh, his strategy was uh, throwing worms and chatterbaits and that's that's what he was saying he caught the fish on that 20 out 28 pound bag so wanted to get back to that now for me uh, I haven't been getting the big fish but my fishing has been very steady so as long as I'm putting uh, putting my time in I've been getting fish in the two to three pound class and for me it's been all worms and jerk baits and I want to let you know again that I have been trying some lipless I've been trying some crank baits and I've been throwing a rigs and I just am not getting bit on those uh, those rigs got a congratulations in line uh, for Riley and uh, this is his picture this is his fish he was out uh, Tuesday he sent me this picture nine pounds seven ounces got his PB uh, here on the Delta and he gave me some good information and this is some information that we can all use here in the next couple of weeks uh, caught it on a crankbait he was in the North Delta and the big information was he caught it on the top of an outgoing tide and that's important because what I want to tell you is I have found that exact information and everyone I talk to that has had success has been fishing the high outgoing tide that's a big key and I, I want to pass that on to everyone remember if you are out here try to hit it at high tide and and fish through the first two hours of the outgoing tide that has been the bite window I want to get back to Riley's fish and, and we'll maybe put up another picture of this and look at this fish. That is a perfect Delta Florida strain largemouth bass. It's short, it's fat, it's got these big shoulders on it. It's in that beautiful largemouth bass green color and that is what it's all about out here. And you know that that as they're getting that color in these stripes, I'm looking at it and that is that is armor for this fish. That fish is telling you, I'm getting ready to camouflage myself. I'm gonna get in here to the nastiest Delta stuff I can get in and I'm gonna wait for a bait to come by or a meal to come by and as soon as that gets within my reach, I'm coming out and grabbing it. That's what that fish is all about. So again, just a beautiful Delta fish. Riley, good job. Uh, congratulations on your, on your PB and thank you so much for for giving us uh, the information that you did as far as how you you caught the fish and everything it really helped so with all of you guys sending me more and more reports I'm getting a better handle on what's going on on the entire Delta and I can relay that information uh, to the guys that are that are tuning in to the report and I think it gives you guys a lot better idea of the general trend so thank you guys so much for for uh, sending me the reports, continue to send them in. I look at all of them and I try to formulate what's going on so I can I can pass that information on. Last but not least, I have gotten um, 
so many requests to do a, uh, a video on fishing low tide. Everybody has trouble at low tide, including myself. If, uh, if anybody has a, a, a formula for, for catching fish at low tide, please call me. We'll, we'll do a video and we'll probably make a million dollars. It is a tough time to fish. But what I'm going to get into, I'd like to say, if everyone could start sending me reports on fish that they catch at low tide, I don't care if you catch one fish, let me know. Steve, I caught a fish at low tide, I caught it drop shotting. I want to know what you caught it on, what depth you were at, uh, and also what type of bank you were fishing. Maybe if you were off of a rock bank, a tule bank, a point, or a uh, maybe a flat. I want to know the bait, the depth, and what type of bank you're fishing on. As I get this information, I will compile it, and when I'm able to put out my video, hopefully I'll get dozens and dozens. If I'm lucky, in the next couple months, I'll get maybe a couple hundred, and I'll be able to put together a video and tell you guys, hey, you know what? Out of all of these uh, reports that I've got, about 80% of them say they're getting fish in eight feet of water on drop shot with the margarita mutilator. That's going to be very useful information to us. It might be, hey, I'm catching all of my fish at low tide, uh, you know, with no tide at all, it's dead low. I'm getting all of my fish punching and I'm getting them on this, that, or the other thing. But that's going to be really good information. So start sending me information on what you are catching at low tide, what you're catching them on, and, and just some general information. And I'll be able to relay that to you guys again. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Last week was definitely the time to get out on the Delta. There was It was good fishing and that trend is going to continue going up. But I, I don't like the tides that are going to be around this week. Uh, uh, wait for a week or so. Check your tide coefficients. When you see those going up, I would get back out here. And uh, by that time, unless we get some oddball weather that comes through here and uh, a lot of rain or a lot of storm fronts, everything should be trending upward. So that's a good deal. And uh, it's starting, guys. So tune in next week, and, and we'll see what it does. But uh, I'm hoping to give you guys a lot better reports. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the water.